Alright guys, welcome back to another one. Today we're going to talk about my helmet collection and the helmets that I use the most frequently. I'll compare them for you and rank them as far as how I like them and what I use them for. Okay guys, before we begin, I just want to say this is not an in-depth review of each helmet. It's just an overview of each of the ones that I use the most. I can go into um, individual product uh, reviews for these helmets if you guys like. Just leave a comment below. Tell me which helmet you want to learn more about and I'll gladly do that. So first up is my Shoei X14. This is the most expensive helmet out of my collection. Uh, it runs about $930. It is an aggressive sport bike racing helmet. A helmet that I got when I got my Yamaha MT-10 a few years ago. Um, a lot of cool features. Um, it has pin lock built in, ready for, for that, for the anti-fog. Uh, this visor here is a monochromatic visor, so it does get darker um, as it gets brighter outside, which I think is a great add-on. It's expensive at $200, but it's better than trying to swap your visor out at night, at least in my opinion. Um, it is for an intermediate oval head, comes in four different sizes, made of fiberglass. It's about three pounds, um, three pounds, eight ounces to be exact. It does come DOT and Snell cert uh, safety certified. And um, one of the other cool things about this helmet is that you can get custom cheek pads um, to, to make it fit a little snugger and the inside liner itself can be adjusted and tilted so that if you're riding and you want to have your head more like this and still look forward, um, taking advantage of the aerodynamic design, you can certainly do that. Uh, definitely one of the most expensive helmets out there. It's also, in my opinion, one of the prettiest you can get. As you can see, the design's really nice, very aggressive. Um, my MT-10 was also blue and black, so the color scheme works well, for me at least. I do have my Pack Talk Bold um, set up on this. It's got cutouts for the individual speakers for your ears. It's pretty simple to, to get in there, fit pretty good. Um, a quiet helmet for sure, and as far as buffeting, when I ride it without the, um, when I ride my Road King without the um, windshield, uh, it certainly helps at high speeds. So, again, this is the top of the line one that I own. I've had it for about three years. Um, definitely got use out of it. Um, it shows a little wear and tear, but you know we kind of beat up with things around here. So, all right. So that's the first helmet, uh, and next up is the Shoei RF fourteen hundred. Next up is the Shoei RF1400, um, another helmet by Shoei. This helmet is significantly cheaper, priced at around $580. This is more of a cruising uh, helmet, I guess, if you will. Really good ventilation. Um, probably the most comfortable out of all of the helmets I own and probably the quietest out of the ones I'm going to show you today. Also made of fiberglass. This one comes in five different sizes. Uh, weighs about three pounds, 11 ounces, so about three ounces more than my X14. Also DOT and Snell rated. Um, comes with the pin lock insert. Uh, I don't have the monochromatic visor on this one. Everywhere I go, they're always sold out. And again, at $200, it's a tough pill to swallow, but in my opinion, it's worth it. I also have the Cardo Pack Talk Bold set up on this helmet as well. You know, just like the X14, really easy to put in. I've got wires here for my microphone and stuff, so just ignore that. You can also get custom cheek pads and helmet liners for this. Um, overall, very solid helmet. I've got it in matte black here. This is my second newest helmet. I don't know, I've probably had this for a couple of months now. 
um, got my chin mount on there for the camera and all in all very satisfied with this helmet long distance uh, to me this is my go-to uh, the only thing stopping me from using this all the time would probably be that mon monochromatic visor for that I turn to the x14 and um, you know forget about it there's no extra visor in my bags or anything like that no worries there all in all great helmet um, really good ventilation and I think the overall quietest helmet I have and probably the most comfortable Next up is my modular helmet. This is the LS2 Valiant 2. Uh, now this one, it's a great helmet. I really like the design. If you don't know, the LS helmets can be worn in a variety of ways. You can pull this all the way back, unlike a standard modular helmet. You know, it's kind of up here and catching wind if you like to ride with it open. Um, you can ride it like this as a three-quarter helmet has a built-in sun visor as well. Um, this can be swapped out for clear and other colors and so can this. Um, I really love the design and the idea that I can wear this helmet three different ways. Um, you can see I also have the Cardo Pack Talk Fold set up in here as well. Um, my only gripe with this helmet is this is designed for people with very round heads and um, so what happens when you wear this for long periods of time, there's pressure right on your forehead. I mean, you wear it for a while and you have a, you know, a red mark across your forehead, at least we do. And um, as far as being quiet, not so much. Again, it is modular. You can't expect the same insulated, insulated uh, sound from a modular helmet with moving parts that you can from a standard full face. But all in all, it's not an overly loud helmet or anything. I, I do like how easy the visor comes off as opposed to the showies. There's a little button here on both sides and this guy just comes right off. Also comes pin lock ready. This is my Cobra Commander visor. It's got a blue tint to it. See it's got the shield in there and the design real, real easy to get in and out. You just put it in, you know, you slide one side in and you just lock it in place. So, one of the pros of this helmet for sure. Again, the only con for me is the overall fit of the helmet. Um, it does come in four sizes, um, DOT certified as well as ECE and it range, weighs about 3.75 pounds. So, um, I am happy with this helmet as a, as a short distance helmet. Um, or if it's just too hot to wear a full face and I just want to ride with the thing open, um, it's probably when I use this the most. Uh, but it's, it's a great design. I think if they just change the shape, even though it's listed as an intermediate oval, this is, this is not for intermediate oval. Uh, but again, really good helmet, um, ton of features, just not for my shape head. Last up is my newest helmet. This is the Scorpion XO Covert. This is the older model. 
I got it for $200. I know there's a new model out there. Not a lot of differences. To my understanding, it's slightly lighter and they use a different composite for the shell itself. So for the purposes of saving $100, uh, I went with the older one. Uh, also got the Cardo installed on this one. It doesn't list as you can do that, but um, I figured out a way to do it. I can talk about that more in a little bit here. Um, if you haven't seen these Stormtrooper style helmets, um, come with this drop down visor, which is actually really clear and I'm really surprised by the field of view from side to side that you get. Push these little buttons here. And you can remove the mask. I do have a microphone in here. I'll unplug this here. Um, you can wear it as a three quarter. Works good with goggles, eyeglasses. You can see here, I snuck the Cardo headset right in here. So the good thing is that I got Cardo in here. The bad thing, well, not necessarily bad, you can actually take this neck curtain off as well and wear it as a half helmet. I have no plans to do that, so I'm totally satisfied rocking it as a three quarter or with the mask on itself. Um, ventilation's pretty good in this. I think the number one thing with this helmet is if you think of it as the three-quarter helmet it is, you will not be disappointed by this helmet. In my opinion, this is not a replacement for a full-face helmet. But the mask works good, ventilation's good. Um, it's not too heavy or bulky. Uh, like I said, it runs about $200. Uh, comes in, uh, I wanna say five different sizes. Weighs about three and a half pounds. Um, DOT certified. I think that's about it. Which is pretty good for a three quarter helmet. Uh, supposedly this plastic has some uh, some special coating, anti fog coating. I haven't ridden it enough to have to deal with any fogging, but um, I did take a long trip with it, and it, I didn't have any problems with it fogging up at all. Another cool thing, you can swap this out for different colors if you want to trick it out a little bit. Uh, great second helmet. That, that, that's how I see this helmet here. Not, not my primary, not my go-to uh, for um, all occasions. Uh, certainly not something I would necessarily wear long distance. Again, it is a three-quarter, so it's going to be a little, little bit louder than any of the showies. And probably a little bit louder than the LS2 Valiant. But certainly, it's got some badass looks and it is comfortable. So let's rank the helmets. Fourth place for me is the LS2 uh, Valiant. Again, great features. You can rock it like that. You can rock it with the visor down, obviously, and you can rock it without the chin guard, without it holding you back in the wind. The only thing that prevents this helmet from being getting higher ranked as far as my personal helmets go is the fit itself but it's still a good enough helmet for around town. And if you got a perfectly round head, then this might be the helmet for you. Also, what I didn't mention last time was that it comes with a really nice backpack. Store your helmet, put your helmet in. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can wear it as a backpack and walk around and be extremely uncomfortable. But the backpack itself is actually really nice, good quality. And it also comes with an inflatable neck roll. Um, put it upside down in case you're, you know, you're, you're working on the helmet. Uh, it gives you a place to set the helmet without it flying all over. Me personally, I like to use it on an airplane when I'm tired. But all in all, I am satisfied with this helmet. Third place for me, the Scorpion XO Covert. Um, again, it's a three-quarter helmet, so it, it's not going to perform as well as the full-face helmets, whether it's showy or another brand, if we're talking about comfort, quietness, um, safety, things of that nature. But it's a badass helmet. Definitely my favorite number two helmet as far as something different to ride and in different conditions. Great for short jaunts. Uh, I like to wear the mask on the highway just for wind protection and debris and stuff like that. And probably one of the better looking helmets out of the ones I have. Second place, and this was really hard for me because there's 
I have things for this that I don't have for the first place helmet. But second place is my X14. Great helmet. Probably the nicest design one I have. Comfortable, race orientated. Uh, monochromatic shield. That was extra, but it is a great, it's even better helmet when you have that. It's one less thing to worry about. Um, fits good, quiet helmet. Uh, if I had any gripes about this helmet and just show you in general is the mechanism that you have to remove uh, if you're swapping out the visor. But again, for me with this helmet, I don't have to do that. One visor, never comes off. It's great. Um, I do use it a lot long distance. It's just, I, it, it, again, we're splitting hairs, hairs here, and this is totally subjective. To me, the main difference between this helmet and the RF1400, not even so much the aerodynamics, but it's not as quiet and it's not as comfortable for long-term riding. Um, again, this is designed for the track, so I wouldn't expect it to be that, but it is a badass helmet. The most expensive helmet I have. Um, at almost a thousand dollars it is a tough pill to swallow but if you're a rider and you ride every day and if you like to ride fast certainly you cannot go wrong with this helmet and as a surprise maybe to some of you guys my favorite helmet in my possession is my Showy RF 1400 um, like I said before the quietest and most comfortable helmet I have ventilation's good I don't have to worry about fogging up uh, fits my cardo, which is a requirement for a mandatory for you know if there was one helmet to rule them all I got to have my com in there um, Good ventilation if I haven't said that already my only gripe with this helmet and It's just like the x14 This is a pain in the ass um, Fidgeting with this thing at night when I have to put the clear visor on and I you know I don't feel like you know riding with the visor up and some glasses or whatever um, It is frustrating the other frustrating thing for me and again. This is me. This may not apply to everyone The visor itself the clip is right here in the front to push it up, right? Which is fine, but if I have my GoPro sitting right here It's a pain in the ass. I'm not gonna lie and if we just back up a little to the art x14 the little tab to pop the helmet off is actually offset. I really wish they did that for the RF1400. That would be the only thing I changed on this besides uh, a monochromatic uh, visor and I never have to worry about it again. But if I had to have just one helmet for all occasions, to me this would be it. Between comfort, quiet, ventilation, um, it's probably the helmet I use the most. And um, overall, extremely happy about it. Almost half the price of this helmet, so it does win as far as that's concerned. Um, so I think what you get with this helmet, uh, the value at the price compared to this helmet is fantastic. Uh, I, this one, I mean, if you look at them from the side, is less aerodynamic, but I can tell you what, I've you know, been at top speeds on my bike with both of these helmets without the visor and it's really really minimal uh, even turning my head and everything like that show we did a great design uh, I'm sorry a, a great job with the aerodynamics you know they put a lot of time and effort into these helmets and stuff like that but you can see that this helmet is designed to be worn more head down to take advantage of the aerodynamics where this helmet is more of a cruising helmet set for probably more of a position like that so uh, you know just like motorcycles you know you know you pick a helmet based on its fit comfort and for what you're gonna use it for all right guys that's the video uh, for my helmets uh, I, w I was getting a lot of questions about all the helmets I wear and stuff like that so I wanted to do a brief overview and how I teach and helmet compared to each other um, all in all you really can't go wrong what I would say the exception of these two because these are more specific in um, what they're best at. Uh, this one more so with the shape of the head being involved, but this uh, great helmet, like I said, wouldn't be my everyday. That doesn't mean it won't be your everyday. It's a great helmet. Um, but for me, for 
all purposes. I like my showy full faces, um, not married to any brands or anything else like that. It's to me the, uh, the fit, ventilation, and how quiet the helmet is, is the most important to me. Um, so I go that and then everything else is, um, you know, a compromise of some shape or form. I hope you like this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. I'd love to hear from you guys what you want to see next. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time.